Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be working in Clip Studio Paint. As I mentioned in Monday's video, that I kind of wanted to play around with some screen tones and inking potentially, and I find it a lot easier to work on my screen tablet alongside with Clip Studio Paint for this, so that is what we are going to be doing today. I already went ahead and switched over to kind of a comic layout. So I went ahead and already made basically three pages for this very, very, very short comic alongside with the panels. So Clip Studio Paint is quite nice to work with because there's a way for you to easily make the boxes for your panels alongside with splicing up the panels and it will automatically make the gutters for you, which is quite nice. So I'm already going ahead and starting off with a very rough sketch to kind of plan out a little bit of the layout for each of the panels. But while I'm doing the rough sketch, I'm going to address the elephant in the room, which is my current setup. So usually when I record any kind of video with screen recording, I tend to do a lot more, I guess like time lapse footage for it, but I find it a little bit dizzying to watch, but I also find that there's not enough on the screen happening for me to do real-time footage, so I forgot this existed until I started watching a few streams because I've seen plenty of people use this and I've had this kind of saved onto my desktop for quite a while, but I've never actually started to customize it or to kind of test it out. So the past few days I was playing around with the layout and everything. So this little cartoony version of my hand on my screen, it's based off of my persona, I guess, or my VTuber model. And basically I believe it's called Spud Tablet or Spud Arm. I'll leave the video that I watched alongside with the link to where you can download this asset. And it basically is kind of like a glorified gigantic cursor for your screen, but you can make it into a hand and an arm. So it's following wherever I'm placing my mouse or in this case my tablet pen on my screen because it's syncing up with it so it kind of looks like I'm drawing on my screen. I thought it would be a little bit easier for you guys to kind of keep track of what I'm drawing and where I'm drawing if I have this on the screen. You guys can let me know if this is too distracting if I do end up recording like screen recording on Clip Studio Paint or Paint Tool Sci in the future but I think it might be a little bit more beneficial. If not, I'll keep it for streams or very like seldomly posted videos from time to time if you do prefer either time-lapse or just like no weird cartoon hand on the screen. But for today's video, it will be here. So uh, this is gonna be kind of like the trial run. So I'm kind of freezing through a little bit of the rough sketch. I am kind of just doing the placement of the characters, which happened to be my OC Masaki and kind of temporarily named Kaisen. So they are just having a conversation and I wanted to include a little bit more of like close-ups of the character. And because I wanted to focus a little bit more on inking and some of the screen tones, I really wanted to include either Akemi or Kaisen because they have a little bit more of a darker aesthetic, which I think would be easier or a little bit more higher contrast to work with in terms of doing like inking. I can probably fit in a lot more like darker tones or even just solid black fill. So that's why I decided that I would probably draw Kaisen because he has black hair. He has more less darker aesthetic in terms of his clothing style and it was easier for me to make a scenario up with him and Masaki, so that's what I currently have. So kind of like in terms of the entire process, in terms of like planning this kind of like the paneling and everything, the gutters, a little bit more easily, I did do a very 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 rough draft of both the, a little bit of the dialogue alongside with the paneling in my sketchbook before kind of planning it out in Clip Studio Paint, then doing the rough sketch and then making another new layer for the different uh, panels here and doing a cleaner sketch. So hopefully this cleaner sketch will give me a better idea on how I want to do the inking, even though there's going to be a lot of details missing from this that I will kind of decide to put in as I'm doing the inking. And I'm not super confident when it comes to doing like inking both traditionally or digitally. So 
once we get to the inking portion, you're gonna see me kind of do a lot of like deciding on a whim on how I want to do the inking for kind of the panels today. Another thing I was kind of thinking about whether or not I wanted to lean it very much just like my own style or did I want to look up a lot of references for like actual manga panels or do I want to look for more comic book styled and I don't technically have like a preference but I definitely have a lot of habits so I just inked how I felt most natural and I definitely feel like I struggled a little bit when it came to delegating what I wanted to kind of like manually put in as tone versus what I wanted to add in as stuff that needs to be defined via the screen tone so it's gonna be a little bit of uncertainty and I should have probably said this at the very beginning I don't know how to use screen tones properly and effectively in a very like professional way at all nor do I ink very well so a lot of this is gonna be just me having fun and a lot of experimentation so in the future if I want to do even more practice or I just want to do more inking and screen toning again and I kind of want to revisit this idea I do have some other kind of like scenarios and stuff planned with I guess like Masaki, Kaisen, and Koji alongside with one with kind of like Sato and Akemi just because I would like to eventually do a little bit of not exactly comics per se or like one shots but just like very small strips of anything relating to their story and I'm not gonna make everything I guess like for a video or post everything I kind of just want to do it for very much like a self-indulgent thing so I do apologize if I don't end up posting any of those in the future but now you can see that for all three pages I have the rough sketch done and kind of the cleaner sketch done and I will make a new folder and make a new layer above those ones and start to do the inking process which I will leave the pen that I'm currently using in the description because I will always forget what pen I'm using but hopefully my Clip Studio Paint still open with the pen kind of available. I believe it's like a Korean brush but I haven't had the time or at least thought about it actually looking at what the name is so I'll make sure to put it in the description and label it as the kind of inking pen or whatever so it's easier for you guys to distinguish which pens I was using for what part of the process but in terms for the sketching I was using the froggy pencil as it's I don't know, I just think the texture is kind of funky and fun and also the marks that it lays down is quite clear to me so that's what I like to use to sketch. So as I'm working on Kaisen's face, this is when I started to abandon the very first little panel and I started to work on Kaisen instead because I wanted to focus on how I wanted to ink the characters more so I thought it'd be beneficial for me to kind of ink him first and I did a bunch of iterations for his eyes so I think I did about four different brushes and inking methods in a way but I decided to settle for this because even though I'm not fond of how I ink the eyes it's kind of like more or less like more reminiscent to how I actually do my coloring stuff for the eyes so I decided to leave it because it looks a little bit more akin to what I usually work when I do like painting where I sketch in my sketchbook. Whenever I do inking, I feel like I always talk about this, is the fact that I have a hard time doing the inking or I dislike the inking process and I feel like watching other people ink is very like satisfying. I love seeing people's like I guess like line width variation within like one single stroke. I love seeing the confidence that they have with the lines. But for me, I'm either way too self-reliant on the stabilization or I, I guess like I'm too wobbly with my lines. So I'm trying to find a good balance between leaving things maybe sketchier and not needing to rely on the stabilization but then there's a lot of like wonky wobbly lines that I feel like would benefit from it so as I'm doing kind of like the inking process I keep changing the stabilization on my inking brush so that if I want to build up texture or I want to do kind of like more quick strokes I like to reduce the stabilization so that I can actually make the quick strokes more natural and they are just done a little bit more fluidly 
because it's such a short motion with my wrist but whenever i have to do any kind of like longer lines that i want to be very i don't know very smooth and you can see i'm probably using it a little bit more for maseki's hair right here versus probably the little i guess like hatching i don't know if you would call it hatching but like the little darker zigzaggy marks in his hair i also do it for kaisen's highlights in his hair or like a little bit under the chin if i want that kind of block of black to kind of trail off but that's why i was kind of mentioning that i was thinking if i end up doing too much like hatching with the pen does it defeat the purpose of me using the screen tone or should i use less screen tone in place of where i add more hatching so i definitely want to do a little bit more i, I don't know if it's like i guess like referencing so i want to look up a lot of like how other artists do a lot of their screen toning and stuff and seeing if there is like a, a balance or a kind of like an aesthetic that i really enjoy from somebody's inking style i was even thinking that i was gonna entertain the idea maybe in the future of doing colored panels kind of like more webtoon style rather than like plain inking but it's more reminiscent to comic books that are in black and white or manga pages just to see kind of the difference because sometimes i feel like the way people ink for like a black and white comic is very very different versus to a person who wants to do like a colored webtoon or a colored comic or whatever just because there's a lot of different things you can rely on to kind of create the the scene or the character and portray them in a certain way so maybe in the future i'll kind of entertain that idea once i get a little bit more confidence in terms of like i don't know i i'm not i don't feel confident in writing first of all so i do apologize and if you can just avoid the dialogue in this just just look at the different panels instead because if anything that's what i had the most fun doing rather than thinking about like a scenario and oh one thing i forgot to talk about this too pacing i either need to read more in general like books or continue to read more manga if i want to understand the exact um i guess like how people utilize pacing for frames or i guess not frames i guess like the paneling because i became very confused on what i wanted to be like larger panels or smaller panels oh also this kind of like mini comic thing that i made you read from left to right just like as usual western media is read so i did not do it from right to left and i hope that makes it a little bit easier to read and it's not confusing even though i think it's a little bit more evident in terms of how i have the dialogue set hopefully but um yeah, I think I want to take a little bit more care and do a little bit more research if I want to do something a little bit more polished next time because I would love to learn a little bit more on like why people choose to do like certain size panels, when to break the panel for maybe something a little bit more impactful or dynamic. I guess like also where text placement is and like the little speech bubbles or like sound effects i didn't really do or anything like that there is like one instance in this entire little comic that i accidentally forgot to kind of move one of the text out of the way so it's kind of like embedded into the shirt of kaisen so yeah i feel like it's a little bit hard to see but hopefully once i'm done with the inking portion you guys will be able to see a little bit of the screen toning which i never got to play around with a lot of screen toning in clip studio paint so i did look up a bunch of different i guess like tutorials or like people's processes at the time because i did a few at the very end of 2023 and i did not really understand how to use the half tone function in clip studio paint so i'll also probably put it as a pinned comment hopefully i'll remember tomorrow that there is a way to do screen toning in procreate as well as there is a half tone option in some of the i don't know if it's called filters or it's basically where you find like gaussian blur there's noise there's uh, motion blur whatever there's an option called half tone and basically you'll be able to do the same thing that you're gonna see me do just shortly after i finish doing all the text for the little panels here 
So you'll see that also in the first panel, I did end up changing how I inked the little succulent plant just because I did not like how bold of the hatching that I did. But let's move on to the screen toning. So I feel like there's a bunch of ways to do this and there's like definitely brushes that you can use to do screen toning or half tones. But for me, I'm going to be blocking out a section of gray first to do kind of a test. And I'm just kind of covering an area where I think I want to either have more value or I want to have shadow. Up here, there's kind of like a little grid uh, checkered pattern and you can basically click this and it turns your kind of laid down color which happens to be gray for me into the half tone or the screen tone so there is a bar with the frequency to allow you to change kind of like the density of your dots there's also other patterns that you can choose from another one that I like to utilize is noise but there's like circle, I believe there's diamonds, there's squares, there's I think cross or something like that. There's like a bunch of different ones you can play with, but noise is kind of nice. And I just left the majority of today's kind of like screen toning to be on the default, which happens to be the circle pattern. Then in terms of the frequency, I initially left it at default but i will change it to the max which will be 85 which happens to be a more fine kind of grain look to the screen tone because to me it looked a little bit less disruptive and it might be also just the sizing of my panels as well or like the page that the initial kind of like half tone or screen tones on the screen just looked a little bit too textured for me so you'll see that i I'll end up kind of like upping the frequency a little bit higher. So for the most part, I automatically set the new layer that I end up making to have kind of like the screen tone or half tone. And then I started just kind of like painting in with the brush where I wanted the shadows to be. Sometimes I will just add a whole blob of kind of screen tone at once and then take the G pen and start to kind of chip away where I want kind of the harsher highlights. So this works well for, I think, Masaki's hair alongside with the clothing so that you can kind of give a little bit of depth or a little bit of wrinkles here and there to their clothing instead of leaving it entirely flat. So to kind of change up the kind of how dark i guess like the value of your screen tones for me i'm sticking with the grays but the lighter your gray is obviously the lighter your screen tone is and then the darker your gray or as we approach black the kind of more dark our dots get but you can definitely play around with the frequency too so the frequency kind of like expands both the dot size and i believe it might be increasing the spacing in between them so it makes it a little bit easier if you would like to kind of make some of the textures a little bit more bold or if you want to kind of condense it like how i did for the majority of these I definitely want to look up other methods of how people apply screen tones. I know some people also do a little bit more of like gradations by using the airbrush to kind of get rid of some of the dots. Similar to how if you did screen tones kind of traditionally, you can kind of scrape away that patterning within kind of like a deleter knife, exacto knife, whatever you want to call it, like the little exacto blade. And you can kind of scrape off the dots to kind of leave a little bit more of a hazier look or or kind of soften the dots a little bit more. So for kind of his, I guess like his kimono-esque, like modern kimono shirt is what I have him kind of wearing. I wanted it to be dark, but I didn't want it to compete with the black. But I did not know if I wanted to continue using just the halftone dots all over for his shirt. So I decided that I would change it to noise. I also reduced the, I guess like the angle alongside with the kind of like the size of the noise texture. Then after that, I went ahead and took the G pen and started to erase. Oh, this is where I'm kind of like playing around with the the texture size of the noise filter here but basically as i am kind of laying down the kind of noise on top of his shirt i am kind of chipping away to show the highlights because i think it's a little bit easier than me painting in and avoiding areas where i don't want light to be 
or where I want light to be. So yeah, hopefully seeing the process makes it a little bit less intimidating on I guess like trying to do screen tones on Clip Studio Paint. I also like how easy you can kind of change the values here. You can definitely change it by also lowering the opacity, but for me, I find it a little bit easier to alpha lock that layer, change my kind of value of my gray to be lighter and then color over my already placed down little screen tone layer so it makes it a little bit easier for me to stay within where I already colored alongside with being able to kind of test the colors very quickly. I should have probably also mentioned this earlier. I moved my kind of like filming setup and my computer to a different room and I feel like I'm still adjusting to how loud I can be in terms of, I guess like my family's sleeping right now, like my parents and my older brother, so I don't want to disrupt them by speaking too loud and I don't think this room is very soundproof, so because it's like 2.30 in the morning, I'm trying to speak at a lower volume, so I do apologize if my voice sounds a little bit more raspier than usual. Hopefully it's not too much of a problem, but hopefully once I get a little bit more comfortable, I'll kind of revert back to how I usually sound anyways. It's just like right now, I'm just feeling a little bit, a little wary, if anything. But I think using the screen tones in Clip Studio Paint actually has been quite fun. I also would like to play around and seeing how I can I don't know, I can probably also add in my VTuber model the next time I do a drawing session like this maybe like maybe i'll do a real-time talking video alongside with me working in clip studio paint just because my new setup kind of allows me to have a little bit more flexibility in terms of how i'm recording since i'm using my uh obs instead of what i used to use for screen recording which allows me to be able to put this little hand overlay while i'm working also i will leave another link to a video from i believe ina from hollow live who was explaining how she uses this kind of function for a layer to kind of create an outline so i will definitely link that because i found it a little bit easier for me to make speech bubbles on the fly because it makes it a little bit easier if you're not using like pre-existing assets or if you don't want to do line art and do the bubbles afterwards so it was a little bit easier for me to use the outline kind of tool to do that because it's really easy to adjust so i'll link all the things that i was referring to hopefully in the description so you guys can use them and i feel like we're approaching the end of this little screen toning session so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a little bit of the close-ups of each of the pages alongside with some of the overviews so you guys can see it i'll make sure to put the panels at the very end as well but unfortunately because of the half tones and how computers and screens work alongside which is like the dpi and stuff it's gonna be hard sometimes to see the texture properly as i'm panning or whenever i zoom in and out on specific areas because the dots kind of react in a different way so hopefully at the end of the video when i'm showing you guys kind of the still images it won't be too off from how i initially saw them when i was placing down the screen tones and you guys will be able to see it kind of more properly so yeah here's kind of the second panel and here's the third panel yeah hopefully in the future i will be able to do a little bit more experimentation maybe try to do that webtoon idea ish kind of aesthetic alongside with just drawing my ocs a lot more in general also the little chibi of masaki here is my favorite i just love drawing him small and cute so i really love this one but i think that's it for today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me kind of attempt to do a little bit of screen toning and all that and i'll talk to you guys next time in the next video bye